As we gather for worship this morning, we acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands on which we are meeting, wherever that may be, and we recognise their special cultural bond with these lands. We commit to seeking the reconciliation between First and Second Nation peoples of this land, praying for this continuing process and those involved in it. Good morning and welcome to everybody. So glad you can join us today, uh, this Sunday, the third Sunday of Advent, where we celebrate joy. So, let us worship our God. The one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world, says the Gospel of John. You sent your prophet John the Baptist to prepare the way for the coming of your son, our Saviour. You gave a song to Mary. May the joy of Christ penetrate our lives and the life of your world. Send your joy like a sudden downpour of refreshing rain. You make our hearts glad, our feet to dance and our voices to sing. Amen. And in the spirit of joy, let us have our opening hymn, which is Joy to the World. <laughs> Sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more let sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns in fast or ground. He comes to irrepressible, bubbling up in an explosion of energy. What the weary long for, what our children often embody, what makes the divine smile, joy. It cannot be paid for, but is a priceless treasure. As we hope for your arrival, as we pray for peace in your living, as we wait and watch and wonder how you might reveal yourself to us. God, give us joy in your advent. And 
because we have lit another advent candle we will have the song one candle is lit <laughs> Surely, Lord Jesus, as dawn follows night, our hearts long to greet you as roses the light. Salvation, draw near us, our vision engage. One candle is lit for the hope of the Quickly, Shalom, teach us how to prepare For a gift that compels us with justice to care Our spirits are restless till sin and war cease One candle is lit for the reign of God's peace Come festively sing while awaiting the birth. Join angels in dancing from heaven to earth. Wave banners of good news, lift high thankful praise. One candle is lit for the joy of these days. Come wonder where lion and lamb gently play, where evil is banished and faith takes the day. A babe in a manger to fool the world's eyes. One candle is lit for God's loving surprise. Come listen, the sounds of God with us ring clear. And signs of a cross in the distance appear. The Word once made flesh, yet the Word ever near. One candle is lit for the Christ birthday here. Advent is going. Time is really moving ahead. Christmas will soon be with us. Christmas Day. The prophet Nehemiah wrote to his people, Go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks, and send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So in the spirit of Jesus Christ, whose return we await for in the hope to bring untold joy through the new heaven and the new earth, let us light this candle of peace and share Christ's words with one another. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Now let us listen to our first reading, 
which comes from the prophet Isaiah, beginning at chapter 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of the faint spirit, they will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation, he has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with the her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For the wisdom of the ancient Hebrews Thanks be to God. And our next hymn will be Rejoice in the Lord Always, because this is what our two readings today are about. Rejoicing in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? 
He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Then they said to him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the, the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah nor Elijah nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. For the good news that Christ brings, thanks be to God. So let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, you may have worked out by now that this week's Advent theme is joy. And we may have an idea about what it means. We usually associate it with deep happiness, usually because of some happening event like the birth of a child or meeting an old friend that you haven't seen for a long time or perhaps going on that special holiday that you've been saving up for for years. But when you look around you, sometimes joy is hard to find. The crisis with the COVID pandemic, more refugees worldwide than ever before, global warming putting at risk the very existence of some countries, while others are being torn apart by war and racial hatred, moments of joy are thin on the ground and very fleeting. They come and go in what seems to be the blink of an eye. I think this is so because what we think of as joy is not joy at all, but are in fact just moments of great happiness, or perhaps they're little glimpses of joy. They point to the possibilities of a great happiness that lasts forever and ever. It gives us something to savour on and encourage us to seek out these moments more often. And the more we immerse ourselves in the life of God, the more of these joyous moments we get out of it. Because you see, God wants the whole world to experience the great joy that comes from knowing him. It is the reason he created the earth and us. It is the reason that he sent numerous prophets to call on the people to turn back to him. It is the reason that he sent John the Baptist to pre preach a message of repentance to the people. And the reason that he sent his own son to die on a cross and rise to new life. God loves us. He wants us to share our lives with him as he shares his life with us. That's not too much to ask, surely. Don't we all want to share in the lives of our children? Unfortunately, this is not always the case for us. We have our own lives and sometimes we don't make the best choices or our children don't make the best choices and relationships become fractured. Even so, as parents, we still hold out hope our children will return to us. This is kind of how we operate with God. We often turn our back on God, and yet God is always there with his arms open, waiting for us to return to him. Parenting is hard, no doubt, but God is our perfect parent. Even though some people blame such calamities as COVID or contracting serious illnesses or having a run of bad luck on God, how can this be? As parents, we wouldn't give any of these things to our children. So how can we think God would give them to us? 
God is patience. God is kindness. God is love. God is true joy. I've heard uh, many people suggest that the New Testament has nothing to do with the Old Testament. And we don't really need the Old Testament as Christians. But today's reading from Isaiah 61 indeed shows how much they are related. This is so because it is Jesus himself who is saying the words that the prophet Isaiah records in chapter 61. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, so on and so on. They are the same words Jesus uses the first time he preaches in the synagogue in Nazareth, his hometown. As recorded in Luke's gospel, Jesus reads those words, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, and so on and so on. But he adds the words, Today this has been fulfilled in your presence. Without saying that he is the Messiah, Jesus is claiming that he is the Messiah. And in that claim is freedom for God's people, if they want it. It is a courageous decision. It is a life-changing decision. And once again, we come to this idea of turning your life around to live under God's will rather than our own. It is good news to the oppressed. It does bind up the brokenhearted. It is liberty for the captive. It is comfort for all who mourn doesn't take away the troubles that we often experience in life but we know that surely God is with us and always will be and if we turn to him he will be there and let's also remember who's God God's people are they are the Jews they are the Christians they are the Muslims they are the Buddhists they are the Hindus they are the atheists, the agnostics, the young, the old, the straight, the gay, the Californians. Anyone who is human or Martian or whatever are God's people. Some Christians think we have a monopoly on God, but we don't. The minute we think that we are better than other people or more privileged than other people or that God owes us more than other people, then we are on the wrong path. I think that is why I am so inspired by the ministry of John the Baptist. I think it is his humility that speaks to me. And it is humility that so many of the mystics and revered people of the church aspire to and hold up as the key quality a person should have. In all that he does, John points to Jesus Christ. Not me, he says, him. I am not the prophet. I am not great. The one coming after me is the great one. I am not worthy to untie his sandals. In everything, John points to Jesus, which as Christians is what we are supposed to do. In this, we also point others to the joy that comes in living with Jesus in our lives. But it takes commitment. One hour on a Sunday isn't going to cut it. Although I have met a few people who think this way. No, it involves turning your life full around, making a 100% commitment, which of course may be different for each and every one of us. But if we want true joy, that is what must happen. I really think true joy can only come when we are living with God in the new heaven and the new earth once and for all. But up until then, we can get wonderful glimpses of what lies ahead as we go through this life. Those times when we help someone or when we make connection in prayer or something from scripture touches our hearts or someone does a kind act for us. Anything that shows the love of God to us in whatever way that may be. This is joy. This is freedom. And as Advent says, freedom is coming, 
freedom is coming. Jesus is coming. Amen. So let us pray. Loving God, thank you for your son Jesus and the joy that can be ours when we come to know him as our brother. Thank you for your love for us to make this so for all your people. Amen. So now let us bring our prayers before God. Your response today is come and save us. So come and save us. O God, for whom we wait and long, we bring to you our prayers for your world and your church. We pray for the world, for all places of conflict and strife. When you come, the broken, bleeding lands are healed. Places of death blossom with new life. Come, Jesus, come and save us. We pray for your people, for the persecuted and for those without food. When you come, the hungry are fed and the oppressed set free. Come, Jesus, come and save us. We pray for all people who suffer, for the sick in body and spirit. When you come, the lame walk and the blind receive their sight. Come, Jesus, come and save us. We pray for your church, for all who wait for your coming. When you come, we shall see the glory and majesty of our God. Come, Jesus, come and save us. And for this community, we bring our special requests before you, O Lord. For Jim and Grant as Jim faces ongoing health problems. For Jill, a dear friend of Margaret and Sydney and her ongoing treatment for medical conditions. We pray for Paul and Rhonda's friend Graham as after a strong fight, Jill passed away earlier this week. And we uphold the family and hope peace surrounds them and brings them some comfort. And we also pray for Richard, recently diagnosed with a serious medical condition. We pray for Ivy and Gus and Sharon, Tyler, especially Ivy at this time with her health problems. We pray for Mary's friend Connie and the difficult issues she faces. And Mary's mum, Daisy, with her ongoing health problems. And we give thanks for progress made so far. We continue to lift up Ray and Jenny in prayer for healing for Ray and blessings for Jenny. We pray for Chrissy continuing strength and encouragement. We pray for Barbara and family, especially Brody, as she deals with health issues. And we also pray for Barbara's sister-in-law, Lorraine, also facing health problems. We pray for Beryl and Ray, and especially Beryl's brother and sister, who have been health, facing health issues. And we also pray for Phil. And we give thanks for the wonderful way he's been uh, dressing up as Santa and going out and bringing some joy to people in his neighbourhood. We pray for Jan and Wal for healing for Jan and we give thanks that Jan has been able to attend our services on the Sunday. It's been good to see her in that way. We continue to pray for Faye, for Suzanne's sister in Queensland, facing health issues. And our friend Pearly, who has faced health issues, and we give thanks for healing that is taking place. We also pray, pray for Jacqueline's family 
and the difficulties they are having. And we also pray from for Shaquille, who uh, uh, his mother in the op shop asked for prayers. And we pray for those who have not made their requests known to us, but are still in need. We bring them all before you, Lord. So Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And now together in whatever language we feel at home with, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those that sin against us. And save us from the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Yeah. We come to our time of notices. Next Sunday, the 20th of December, is our contemplative service. Uh, it will be online again. And we will also have a 9 and 10.30 a.m. services, which you will need to book for if you wish to come. Uh, just a forerunner for our Christmas services. This year at Narry North, we are running our first Blue Christmas, which is a Christmas where it's not such a good time for some people. And we want to bring them and uh, gather them and comfort them at this time. That's on Wednesday the 22nd of December at 7pm and of course uh, people will have to book to come along to that. Uh, Christmas Eve we're holding a family carols service at, at 5 o'clock and there'll be a sausage sizzle. Uh, we will go through the story of Christmas and there'll be lots of carol singing and some uh, good songs for children. I understand from a friend that uh, Santa will be making an appearance uh, and it promises to be a fun few hours where we can celebrate the birth of Christ and open up the church to the community again. Uh, it's limited numbers, even though it's outside, we're limiting it, limiting it to 50 people so you will need to ring and book for those but it promises to be a great evening and of course on Christmas Day on the 25th of December we will be having a 9am service uh, to commemorate the birth of Christ and you're welcome to that. Uh, just a reminder of our coffee cup challenge where we put aside each week the cost of a cup of coffee and the money that we raise from that will go to the work of uniting and also our grocery collection I'm reminding you about that just to donate uh, one item each week for food hampers that will go towards helping those who are struggling at this time so keep all these things in your mind and if you wish to come to any of those services, please ring and book. Okay, so our life has forgotten. Christmas bowl, very important. Christmas bowl appeal. Uh, our church supports this each year. We raised over $500 last year and we wish to do better. Uh, so please make sure you can put a few coins aside for the Christmas bowl to help others in other countries in the world. Our words of mission. Go out as God's joy. Go out as God's joy-filled people to find joy whatever circumstances of life you face. Know God's favour and share God's joy with those you meet along the way. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we trust in your goodness and believe in your kindness. We go rejoicing in God our Saviour, who has done great things. Amen. So, loving God, when we are low on joy 
Help us not to miss the surprising splashes of brilliant light and colour in the world you have made. Shine your light into places of despair and hopelessness and help us, like John the Baptist, to testify to your light that shines in every place. And as we do so, may we feel your blessings upon us as God our Creator, God our Redeemer and God our Sustainer. Through Christ's precious name. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. And our final hymn is Christ be our life. Longing for light, we wait in darkness Longing for truth, we turn to you Make us your own, your holy people Light for the world to see
Well, thank you all. Thank you so much for joining us today. We wish you a peaceful and loving week and we pray to see you here again next week. Remember, it's our contemplative service. So bring your candles uh, to light for people you wish to pray for at the appropriate time. So uh, we wish you all a loving and blessed week. Bye for now.